It is a privilege to be joined here on the summit today on Midwest Sports Net by Daniel Verstag, who is the play-by-play voice of the Morningside Mustangs. Daniel, the Mustangs are six and one on the season, six and zero oh in GPAC play, and uh, obviously there are some formidable foes coming up ahead on the schedule. But the season to this point, uh, you, I, I would think the Mustangs have to be relatively pleased. What's your take on the season right now? Yeah, uh, first of all, thanks for having me on, Joey. Really appreciate getting the opportunity to talk Morningside football with you. Um, yeah, it's it's been uh, it was interesting. You know, we had the the first game in the you know uh, home season. Benedictine comes to town and um, played a really good game. Morningside probably didn't deserve to win that game. Uh, and you know, when you throw two pick sixes, you you just put yourself in between a rock and a hard place. So um, you know, Morningside a, a tough loss there, but man, they they bounced back well. Had to go on the road to. A, a tough Concordia team, as we've seen now with their victory over Northwestern uh, a few weeks ago. Um, got a really good road win there. That was kind of, uh, you know, the the game that suggested that Zach Chevalier was going to be legit and this passing attack was going to be all right after maybe some questions, obviously, with last year's three-quarterback system that uh, Morningside ran throughout the majority of the year. Um, and then, you know, grinding out a really tough win at Midland in, in week three there um, and and continuing the, the momentum from there. It's It's been a really fun season, and, and I'm just – really eager to see what these next two weeks have in store. I mean, there are massive NAIA championship series implications, conference championship implications. I'm, I'm just really, really eager to see how, how Morningside is prepared for them. I think that Concordia win looks better all the time and may, mm-hmm. uh, when it's all said and done, look even better as the season moves on, though. Big, big games over the next two weeks for Morningside, and really it comes down to this, and we kind of talked a little bit about the, the season on the whole being maybe a little bit backloaded. Well, Morningside has its opportunity to make its statement in the next two weeks. And we start with this Saturday as the Mustangs travel about an hour north to Dort. The defenders upended Morningside last year, 28-24. First win in program history for Dort over Morningside. And I think they successfully made their case for the playoffs, maybe even with that win alone. Yeah, that win uh, kept them from being seven and three, right? And we've we've kind of always asked the question: Can a three loss or two loss even GPAC team make the playoffs if they, you know, if their losses were to Morningside and Northwestern? And yeah, I think if Dort goes seven and three last year with that loss to Morningside, uh, they certainly don't make the playoffs. Um, it was a, a massive statement win, as you said the first time uh, they beat Morningside in over fifteen years uh, of of Dort football. And just really, um, you know, kind of suggested that, all right, you know, Dort's going to be around for a while. You know, this is a team that Morningside's, not that they weren't prepared for them last year, but they're really going to have to be prepared for here in the next few years. And um, I just got to give a, a ton of props to, to Coach Joel Penner, uh, being from Northwest Iowa and growing up and seeing Northwestern and, and uh, you know, being alive longer than the Dort program has existed. I know how much uh, that, that program has struggled in years past. And so he's just done a fantastic job with the program and, and Morningside found that out. Um, that was a really entertaining ball game too. You know, Dort jumped out to a massive lead. They were up, I think, three scores in that game. Morningside came all the way back to take the lead with about four or five minutes. And uh, and Dort went on a massive drive at the end of the game to, to pull it out. And um, this year is going to be, I think, even more crazy. If that game wasn't good enough for you, this one is, is going to be a, a real hoot. Uh, it's in Sioux Center. And, you know, Morningside's won every game they played in Sioux Center. Uh, it's going to be Dort's homecoming. It's a top 10 battle, uh, you know, all, all these kind of things. You've got contrasting styles. Dort runs their, you know, kind of very patented option running offense and Morningside, as we are going to be talking about, I'm sure, here in the not too distant future, uh, throws the ball a million times a game for a bajillion yards. And uh, so I'm, I'm just really interested to see the, the contrasting styles and um, see how they kind of uh, mesh with each other uh, this week. Yeah, you, you've already mentioned Chevalier, Zach Chevalier, who has really established himself as the quarterback this season specifically. We go back to last season, and, and you know, you, you mentioned you know three different players that saw time starting at quarterback. But Chevalier 
he had seen a little action before, but it was the Dort game last year in which he really started to find his place. Coach Ryan gave him a little bit more time in there to do that. It turned out to be a loss. However, as, as you, you know, alluded to, it, there, there was a rally. There was a comeback. Mm -hmm. Chevalier, a big part of that. And I, I'd love to hear your take on, on his game this season because, you know, 6-1 and one where they are right now, and, and he's been able to not just manage, I think he's led the game well. Absolutely, I would agree with that a hundred percent. You know, he um, his his story is so interesting too. You know, he comes from California all the way out to Mount Pleasant, Iowa, Iowa Wesleyan, and is part of the you know kind of transition back to the NAIA a little bit in the first uh, first couple of years. And uh, of course, the school shuts down, so he's got to find somewhere to go. And he and he stumbles upon Morningside probably at the perfect time with Joe Dolinchek. Um, you know, graduating, the kind of question marks, who's going to be quarterback? They brought in the, the true freshman Cash Parker. Uh, Lennox Brown had played quarterback in high school, but he was moved to wide receiver here at Morningside. Um, and so Zach really entered a, a massive unknown and became the third string quarterback, just kind of bided his time, said, all right, I'm, I'm you know, going to prove what I can do in the limited amount of snaps I got. And um, he's just been on fire this season. Um, you know, he has an army of weapons at his disposal that I think most conferences don't have all the way across the board, whether it's Drew Sellen or before Zach Norton got hurt. Uh, Zach's a fifth year senior, you know, uh, Lennox Brown now at wide receiver, who's I'm biased, but I think he's probably the best athlete in the Great Plains Athletic Conference right now, if not the entire NAIA. There's not one defensive player that can bring him down. Um, you know, that you've got him, you've got the the tight end, Griffin Kraft. Kellen Jacobson had a great game last week with three touchdowns, kind of coming into his, into his own as a redshirt freshman. So um, Zach's been blessed with a great arm. We've seen that already. He threw 60 times in the Benedictine game. I thought his arm was going to fall off by the time the game was over. Um, but he just keeps slinging it and, and keeps completing it. And he, he runs the offense so well. And, and it's, a, it's an offense that... Um, you know, is complex in a way. We love our screen game at Morningside. If you've watched enough uh, football, you you understand we love the screen game. But um, we certainly don't mind, you know, busting the top off a of defense every now and then as well. And we've had the athletes to do that. And he's just delivered dime after dime all season and um, really connecting with a, a wide receiving core that's uh, one of the best in the country right now. Yeah, and you know, it's funny, too, when, when you look back, at least I find it humorous, uh, the, the irony of it, moving Brown to receiver when Brown, of the two quarterbacks last year, clearly he was the running quarterback. He was the one who wanted <laughs> to keep the ball on the ground. It was Brown all the time, and yet now he's a completely different part of the – he's in a different position and a different part of the game, realistically. But it was a great move, and he's mm -hmm. one of the leaders in the NAI in touchdown receptions as well. So uh, a fantastic move on Coach Ryan's part. We're here on Midwest Sportsnet visiting now with Daniel Verstag, the play-by-play -play voice of the Morningside Mustangs here on the Summit. And I want to say thanks for listening. First off, we it's always a privilege to get to visit with all of you. Please subscribe if you haven't subscribed to the channel. That's, uh, that's something cool for us. I have zero this much idea what it does for us algorithmically but it is kind of cool to see that number go up and i think it's encouraging uh, daniel even with with that you, know, you talk about the offense and we could talk about morningside's offense pretty much for another hour or so and 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 probably not you know run out of of superlatives to say and, and not just this year but in in recent years as well of course they're putting points on the board again the defense Gave up a few points to Benedictine, and and generally the first game of the season, sometimes the defense may be just a little bit behind. So so mm -hmm. I think you throw that number out, plus the fact it's Benedictine. You're trading three-point games, home-and-away series. It was a great series. I'm glad that, that the two teams set it up that way. Mm -hmm. But you kind of throw that number aside a little bit. Concordia puts up 21. Uh, Midland, I believe, puts up 21 as well. Yeah. And then after that, the defense really, from a statistical standpoint, not saying they didn't settle in before then, but from a statistical standpoint, you know, not giving up more than a score. And I think that's big as well to be able to put the Mustangs in the position they are right now. 
I would agree, too, uh, on that part. And, and if I can add anything more to the Benedictine game, you could throw 14 points out of Benedictine's uh, 48 off of the board there, too, with the, with the two pick sixes. So, um, yeah, I, you know, defensively, we, Morningside's gotten better as the season gone, has gone along. Um, you know, that that was a group that I think, uh, you know, Coach Ryan and um, all of Morningside uh, would would have loved to uh, rely on it. Uh, you know, they were there was high praise for him. You, you bring back a, a decent amount of fifth year seniors, um, you know, the entire almost the entire linebacking core. I know Isaac Pingle and Hayden Mendel are both uh, fifth year seniors. Landry Phipps might be a little bit younger. Um, you've got Malik Hampton in the secondary as as a safety, really picking up where Lonnie, uh, Lonnie Boyd Jr. left off. Dijon Walls becoming um, the premier cornerback there for Morningside after Jamal Jones graduated. And, uh, you know, bringing in a transfer from Kansas Wesleyan. Uh, Michael Barnett has been uh, a fantastic addition to the secondary. And you you add guys who have um, been kind of waiting their time. Cade Harriman in that secondary. He's been a fantastic safety for Morningside. Uh, Logan Maycumber, he's been relegated now to a backup role at the corner position. But, um, gosh, when he comes in there it doesn't feel like uh, Morningside's lost a step in the secondary um I I, I again I, my bias will show but I think our secondary is is one of the best in the country and and has been for a number of years you can go back to Jamal Jones you can go back to Dion Claiborne and Clayton Nordeen as safeties and then of course uh, Xavier Spann as a corner Stephen Evans um so that that group has just continued to get better and better as the season's gone along um but but the group I've really enjoyed seeing is the defense defensive line gets so much better um and, and there are so many guys on that defensive line that are making an impact uh, both on the ends uh, both on the in the middle um you know I, I would say probably against Benedictine if if the defense didn't do anything well it was you know getting pressure on the quarterback I'm not sure we actually had a sack uh, against Benedictine in that game but uh, they have continued to uh ramp up the pressure ha- have been making tons of plays in the backfield and the, and the crazy thing too is you you can see um, during a Morningside football game times where, you know, four defensive linemen are out there and all of a sudden the next play, three guys sub in at the defensive line position. And, and so you've got seven, eight different guys that are making incredible plays on defense. And again, just proving the depth of the Morningside defense is is so good. And um, it, it's it's definitely going to be put to the test with, uh, with the Dort's offense that likes to run the ball. Um, I like our front seven against uh, a Dort rushing attack, but they also ran the ball against us pretty well last year. So um, I, I'm, I'm just... I'm I'm thrilled with how the defense has continued to grow, and, uh, grow, and especially in the in the front unit. Um, that defensive line has just really made some large strides as the as the seasons progressed. And, and I don't care what level of football you're talking about. If you have that kind of depth of quality on the defensive mm-hmm. line, and you can sub those players in, just like you mentioned, uh, without skipping a beat, then that goes a long way toward your opportunity to come away with a W at the end of the day. Daniel, I, I want to uh, I want to not look too far ahead, but I, I while I have you here on the summit, we have to talk about Northwestern too. I mean, because win or lose on Saturday, then it's another I mean, you know, big big game on the schedule. The series between Morningside and Northwestern has been a little bit closer, and of course, Northwestern mm-hmm. also had a win last year over the Mustangs in the regular season. The first time that had happened since the playoff I, I, the NAI semifinal back in 2020 I believe is when the, the last time Northwestern had won and so you know that's another big game this could almost be a little bit of a revenge tour for the Mustangs I, I don't know what their thought process on that is fans I'm sure would like it to be a revenge <laughs> tour and, and get a couple of, of wins that they didn't get last year but that should be a big game as well yeah, and I'm eager to see if we uh, have a blizzard during that game this year. If, if you'll remember correctly, we were in whiteout conditions in Orange City last uh, last season uh, at, at Corver Field. Um, you know, Northwestern has has just been a natural arrival of Morningside's in football for the last uh, you know 10, 15 years. It's, it's the only program that's been able to touch Morningside since Sioux Falls left the conference in 2010, and um, you know has really, like you said, put put some great uh, uh, you know matchups uh, together. Um, yeah, I, I think Morningside would be lying to itself if if they said there wasn't a little bit of revenge seeking uh, that that might go into the game here uh, in, a, in a week and a half. Uh, you know, Northwestern has. Uh, a young team 
they've been dinged up most of the year. I think I've I've heard they've played 11 different offensive linemen and not out of uh, depth like we were talking about with Morningside's defensive line, but just out of sheer necessity, they needed guys out there. Uh, they've been kind of moving around with two true freshman quarterback uh, quarterback options throughout the season, and um, you know they've that grow, their growing pains have been there for Northwestern. Coach McCarty, I think, would say that uh, to you flat out as well. Um, but but one thing's for sure: if you don't bring you know your A game against Northwestern, regardless of how banged up they are, uh, you know you're you're gonna you're gonna pay for it. And you know I think at that if if Morningside were to lose to Dort, which by rankings technically that would be uh, the way it, it's supposed to go. We know that. That's not how it plays out. But if Morningside does lose to Dort here on Saturday, um, then that turns into a de facto playoff game for, I think, both teams. You know, Northwestern with the loss to Concordia. Yeah, Concordia has been looking good. But, you know, if if Northwestern drops the game to Morningside, then, you know, Dort becomes a playoff game from there. And if Morningside drops one to Northwestern, they're eight and three, and did not beat a ranked opponent all season. So you know, more, there's a lot riding on that game. Should you know Dort beat Morningside this week, which uh, um, w- remains to be seen. But uh, yeah, these are two massive games, and, and like I said right off the top, playoff implications, G Pack championship imp- implications, and and we know uh, whenever the G Pack implications are are brought up, usually. Uh, championship games, NAIA championship game implications, considering this conference has been in the championship game in each of the last six years in some form. So, um, yeah, massive games. Northwestern, I, I can't wait to see it. Thankfully, it's in Sioux City, and so maybe the uh, the Morningside home crowd can give uh, the Mustangs an advantage here in a week and a half. I, let me ask you really quickly, and I don't want to take too long on this question, but it, I, I would imagine Sioux City, Orange City, it's going to be full. And no matter what the site is on that, would that would that be fair? I, I think I've seen it. And obviously, I haven't been there yet. That's that's on the list, by the way, Daniel. Is yes. To, to, to make the to come up, be able to spend about a week at Sioux City, either during volleyball season, basketball season, or get to watch one of these fantastic games, and just mm-hmm. make the tour of town, see all these places. But I would imagine either way around, it's going to be a full full capacity. Well, whenever uh, that trip is scheduled, we'd love to have you, Joey. It's it's a fantastic uh, stadium, and um, you know maybe Morningside got a little trouble here four years ago, but uh, we opened uh, the G Pack schedule with Morningside and Northwestern coming out of the COVID pandemic six months after March of 2020, and you know there there was still a, a crowded house there. Now, granted, our area did pretty decent with with COVID, so it wasn't too big a deal, but um, you know we still got. Seven, eight thousand people in that facility. Um, I, I believe capacity is about ten thousand. So yeah, Morningside and Northwestern brings a massive crowd. Orange City travels well; they support their team. Sioux City travels well. Uh, both bleacher sets at both stadiums get jam packed when those two uh, uh, play against each other. And uh, I think uh, when when they come to Elwood Olson Stadium here in a week and a half, that'll be no different. And, and I'm sure it does help that you're not putting a lot of mileage on whatever vehicle because uh, it, it's, it's going to be close to home for either one of them. Mm-hmm. All right, really quickly, Daniel. First, let me say thank you for being on the program mm-hmm. because I, I really appreciate you taking time for us here on the Summit today. The Dort game coming up first. And if you have not had a chance to listen to Daniel on the call, then do yourself a favor because if you like, if you like sports, and especially this time of year, if you like football – uh, you're, you're going to get a good call. And I have heard him before, and I appreciate him. Daniel, you do a great job. You do well. You broadcast well. You talk a little bit about bias. You're supposed to have a little bit of bias. <laughs> For the home team there, that, that is okay. But uh, mm-hmm. anyway, so I encourage everyone to listen to Daniel, but I also want you to tell them how can they, if they're going to get a chance mm-hmm. to, to hear or watch the game on Saturday or next Saturday. Well, if you happen to be in the uh, listening area, kind of surrounding Sioux City, our, our radio station actually does have a pretty nice reach. You can find that on the AM dial, 620 AM. Uh, KMNS is the radio station. Um, if you're not within Sioux City and still want to listen, you can check that out uh, at 620KMNS.com, or we're also an iHeart radio station, so I know uh, a lot of people use iHeart, uh, the iHeart app for their radio listening or for, for podcast listening. That, uh, that has some options there, so you can search for KMNS 
S on iHeartRadio as well. And of course, whenever we, uh, whenever Morningside is at home, our call is over the top of the uh, the G Pack Network video feed. So for the Northwestern game in a week and a half, you can check that out. Uh, GPackNetwork.com. It's a very nice uh, addition to our conference. Uh, I'm sure you found issues here the last few years trying to watch GPAC uh, football, basketball, and other sports. Uh, we had various different streaming options in the GPAC, and they were not very uh, well organized, but uh, Commissioner Corey Westra worked on that over the off season and, and came up with the GPAC Network. It's a great addition. Uh, smart TV apps, smartphone apps, and of course, GPACnetwork.com. Uh, our calls are on uh, all the morning said home events there, but uh, KMNS, iHeartRadio, uh, 620 AM, they uh, they are how you can listen to Morningside uh, football, basketball, and, and the like uh, throughout this season. I actually did have a chance to visit with Commissioner Wester about that this summer during Commissioner's Week here on Midwest Sportsnet, and he was talking about that, and I, I'm excited about it as well. I will say this, though. Now, granted, I'm a little bit more old school when it comes to some of these things, and you you give me a quality play-by-play guy and or team, uh, you know, broadcast team that can give me a game on the radio and let me know what's happening. I'll listen to that just about any time as well, too. And Daniel is a quality broadcaster, so we appreciate having you on. Daniel, thanks for being with us on the summit today. God bless you, sir, and thanks for letting us know a little bit more about the Morningside Mustangs, who, again, have some big games coming up. Yeah, thanks a lot, Joey. This was fun.